Hey folks, um, had a great chat with a lady called Benjamina Bolag today. She's co-founder and CEO of a very cool company called Higher Stakes that basically makes meat in the lab. Uh, they use state-of-the-art cell culture techniques. They take a little bit of blood from an animal without hurting them, without killing them, and then grow the meat in the lab for human consumption, which is like super cool. Um, she's trying to revolutionize the way we consume meat, solving some of the world's most pressing problems, right? So we get loads of antibiotics uh, in meat at the moment. Uh, there's climate change issues, animal welfare, uh, so really cool and we have a chat around all of that good stuff and also how she's found being a young scientist pioneering and setting up a business trying to raise funding and all of that stuff so uh, i hope you enjoy the podcast as much as i did hey it's lewis welcome to the podcast enjoy our conversations anytime anywhere cool all right and we're live how are you doing great how are you really good thank you very much for coming in thank you pleasure pleasure so what is your background um so yeah i'm benjamina i'm the co-founder and ceo of higher stakes um i have a background in chemical engineering i did my master's at imperial um did some work in 3d printing in fermi simpler ring did some marketing work um, with PepsiCo, some software development and startups. Nice. Um, that was all after university. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, some of it was in university True, yeah. and some um, after, and then started my own company. We were basically um, doing marketing and distribution around portable chargers to large hotel chains. Was working pretty well, but I wanted to do something more impactful and also more scientific and engineering. Um, so I then joined an accelerator called Entrepreneur First that takes Brilliant. you pre-idea and pre tape And this is in, in the UK? Yes. So they have it in the UK, but they also have it in Berlin, um, in Paris, in um, Hong Kong. Okay, brilliant. Um, and, Holland, yeah, I think they opened and you're from Switzerland? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then you came to the UK to study? Exactly. Um, Great. Exactly. And so while I was there, I was exploring ideas and came across the concept of Subway Smith. And for me, it was fascinating in terms of the impact it could have. And at the same time, I felt like all my past experience really fit well into that. Um, especially I could see a real lack of engineering skills in the field. Um, so that's kind of how I got started. And when was this? This was um, around a year and a bit ago. So November 2017. Brilliant. So you met someone in the in the uh, incubator? No. So which... I met someone after. Okay, um, fine. So... First started working with um, David Hay, who's our scientific director okay. um, and the chair of the tissue engineering department at the University of Edinburgh. And after um, the incubator, I um, met Stephanie, um, who has a PhD in modeling Alzheimer's disease, um, using the same type of cells that we're using, ah, and okay. also did some work in biotech startups. And is she your co-founder? Yes, she is. Brilliant. And did you know her before? No, I didn't. Um, Brilliant, right. So I went for a long month of recruiting, um, interview loads of people, yeah. um, every possible way. I mean, events, contacts, wow. um, contacts of contacts. And <laughs> Stephanie, I found her by reaching out to her on LinkedIn and did right. lots of interviewing. And Brilliant. Finally decided That's really cool. Really cool. And then how come you decided to base the company in the UK? Um, I mean, I was already here so yeah, it made yeah. sense to kind of start here yeah um but i have a couple of times thought okay do we want to move this um but it made a lot of sense i think the talent in the uk is amazing um and oh, scientific also, talent yeah, yeah exactly um so we have some of the best kind of um research institutes for um well research groups for um for stem cell science for bioprocessing for material science and all of the elements we need um, to create this. Um, also, there's a lot of great companies that kind of we can work with, um, and lots of grant opportunities. So from maybe, the government. Exactly, exactly. Um, so in Europe in general. Um, so it made a lot of sense to kind of stay here. Great. Um, and get this started here. And so, did the does the UK government offer incentives for like biotech companies to start here? Yeah. So we yeah. have. Um, there's something called the R&D tax credit. So you get about 33% of 
back of everything you spend on R and D. Nice. Um, which is nice when most of your spending. Yeah, I can imagine all of it. Must be R&D. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, ninety percent of what we spend is kind of accountable for that. And then there's also things like Innovate UK that are really helpful. Nice. And then, so where are you actually based? Um, so I'm based in London, but our labs are based in Bristol. So Stephanie um, is based in Bristol. And is that in the university there? Um, no, so it's attached to University of West England, but it's right. a lab called Future Space, um, which has excellent facilities, um, really cheap rent, and nice. it's really great. So you rent you rent the lab space with exactly. all the equipment? Or, exactly. Yeah. I mean, most of the equipment that we need. Great. So it's like a service office for labs. Exactly. Love it, love it. And so, and so, what problem did you want to solve when you started thinking about this? So there's a couple of problems. So maybe it's easier if I run through quickly how cell-based meat is made. Yeah, um, definitely. So that then I can talk about the problems um, for that. So um, the reason the concept of cell-based meat was really started um, is to address some of the biggest challenge from the meat industry. Um, address some of the environmental impacts it has, like CO2 emissions, um, land usage, water usage, um, address the antibiotic issue. So uh, about 70% of antibiotics are used on animals, today, wow. which is quite a <laughs> surprising. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, even in Europe, where you know there's less antibiotic use than in the US, there's still a huge um, amount. Address some of the issues around food, um, foodborne diseases. So um, things like salmonella, mud cow disease, um, African swine flu, all of those, um, and animal welfare. So improve the conditions um, of animals. And in our case, we don't need to kill any. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So those, this is kind of what met, made the field grow. Um, but why we started is because there's a lot of kind of, we wanted to address those issues, but there were a lot of technical challenges right. still in the field before it can be commercialized. Okay. Um, so if I can maybe uh, run through the process, yeah, yeah. it would be easier to explain those. Um, so depending on the cells that you're working with, um, you'll get a sample from the animal. Um, in our case, we can take a tiny blood sample from the animal um, and you can then extract the cells that you want from it. Um, in our case, working with induced fluid and stem cells, we reprogram them in a way that's non-genetically modified. Um, so it's stem cells you're taking? Exactly. Yeah. Well, we are first taking just a blood, tiny blood sample, yeah, yeah. and from there you can reprogram those cells. Right. Okay. To become induced blood protein stem cells. Yeah. That are similar, basically, to embryonic stem cells. Excellent. Um, and those cells, basically, you can expand them infinitely. And how long does it take? Um, so it depends on the animal. Um, so the larger the animal, the longer it takes, and um, the smaller the animal, the least. So it would be different if you're working with, let's say, chicken than with cows. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And so you first expand them and you can then differentiate it. So get it to like muscle, get it to fat um, and tell the cells what to become. And you do that in something called the medium. Yeah. And that medium is basically the nutrients for those cells um, that help it to grow and become those uh, animals. And what's the medium made, made from? Um, so it'll be sugars, vitamins, proteins, um, and everything. Basically, it's trying to mimic a bit the blood. So it's trying to mimic what's happening in the body. So the whole field, you're basically trying to do outside of the body what naturally happens in um, your body and animal's body. And there's no like animals involved in the media? Because I've heard some other similar companies use animal-based media and so eventually the whole industry will get to a stage where we're not using fetal bovine serum. We're right. in our labs already fetal bovine serum. What's it called, fetal? Fetal bovine serum, um, which is basically extracted from um, the fetus. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> right. So it's not, um, it's not, a, the problem is not only it's not ethical, um, but also there's not enough of it in the world to actually produce this at a large scale. Right. Okay. And it's not consistent. So you want something that's, more and more consistent if you want your kind of production to be very consistent um so i believe that all the companies will stop using it eventually and and so you use that from the so start we've already yeah so we already started um we started with protocols um that were taken from the university of minnesota 
um, oh, okay. that already worked without um, Fita Bobensio. Nice. And so where do you have like a manufacturing plant that you're doing this? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Um, so we expect to have our pilot plant, yeah. um, which is a step kind of, if you want a mini manufacturing plant yeah. um, in about a year and a half okay. um, and have a proper plant in the next kind of three, four years. And so how big do the plants have to be to produce, I don't know, like a ton of meat or like what are the plans? So today is still very estimate. So yeah, we're yeah, now... Yeah. Um, working to get really like kind of precise um, figures on that um, oh, yeah. but it's estimated that about 15 meter cube um, by a reactor can get you about 7,500 um, kilograms of meat but that's a very ambitious figure um, and there's other things that will have to come kind of around those bio reactors. Okay and then you'll do that in the UK? Um, we're still determining. Oh, okay, we're still fine. Determining where exactly we would want to do. I think fine. once um, we're now looking to create kind of the plans for that plan. Yeah. Um, and once we have that, we can really work on the techno-economic assessments um, to look, you know, where is the best place to do that. Fine. So at the moment you're developing the process. Exactly. Exactly. So where were you at exactly with? So have you made your first piece of meat? Not yet. Um, not yet. So we expect to do that by July. Okay. Um, yeah. The reason we're really working from the start with scalable technologies and we're making sure, yeah, as you mentioned, the Fita Boven Serum, working without that means that our processes take slightly longer. Okay, right. But, okay. Um, we want to be the first ones to really um, to do a prototype with um, porcine induced protein stem cells. Um, by, um, yeah, in the next six months. Cool. And then what meat did you start with? or have um, you? St- so we're starting with pork. Okay. Um, a couple of reasons for that. There is a lot of processed products with pork. Um, a huge amount of the antibiotic use is um, in pork. Um, also, there's a lot of foodborne diseases. So there's the African swine um, flu, that, flu that's a huge problem now in China. Um, the growth of the market is really huge um and at the moment we're the only ones doing it um, oh, okay. in europe oh okay fine so so the african swine flu is like only in pig yeah. is that yeah swine is pig <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah okay fine yeah showing my bad science knowledge <laughs> um and then the pork consumption is going up in china yeah it's going up globally okay right fine good place to start yeah and you're going to do others as time goes on as well or? eventually yeah so we're now working on our really more having a deeper dive on our marketing plan on exactly when yeah. we want to move to species um, because you have to consider that every species that we'll do we'll have to we go through kind of regulations um, with that so the technologies that we're building um, are more of like a platform type of technology where they work for a, really any species um, but it's more around regulations and around the manufacturing and everything that comes with that and that um, that is the challenge when moving from um, yeah from animal to animal. And do you see this as being more sustainable and eco-friendly and like for sure the future of how we're going to consume? Yes, <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't be doing this. Um, but I think there are some challenges that we need um, we need to address. The um, the good thing that we have is that we're starting from scratch. So when we develop our plants we can develop it to make sure that it's really in a, made in a sustainable way. Um, that we think exactly, you know, do we want to maybe put it, um, the location of the plant in somewhere where it makes sense for the water usage, somewhere where it makes sense for electricity um, to get to it um, in a sustainable way. So we have the chance to think about all this and we have a lot more flexibility around that nice. than you would have with, yeah. Your so, we, so we talked about no animals are killed. Yeah. No animals are harmed during the process? No. So, I mean, you've made, you've had a blood check, right? Yeah. It's, you need less blood than It that. kills. It kills. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just that no animals are harmed. And then as you mentioned water and electricity and so forth. Yeah. So compared to like killing meat and etc. We can't say. So there's been some studies that have been made um, that estimated around 90% reduction um, in CO2 emissions, in water usage, um, and I think for um, and in land usage and electricity was about 45%. But those studies were very general and were okay, yeah. you know were made using pharmaceutical uh, processes. Um, different companies will have different 
Um, so it's called a life cycle assessment, where basically you kind of look at each element that you're putting through in your process and what's the environmental footprint of that. Okay. And so, but no, no one's like more advanced than you yet? Um, people are, but no one is yet selling. Um, okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. And why is it better for your health? Um, so there's no antibiotics. There's um, and on the antibiotics, and so how does a lot get into the into the animal? Yeah. Well, some animals are produced without antibiotics, but a lot of them are. So yeah. Fine. And that eventually you get that. There's um, no kind of we screen for everything like salmonella, all of the foodborne diseases. So obviously, if you leave your meat for like five weeks outside, like you will get foodborne diseases, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you have a lot, um, because it's made in a clean environment, you have a lot less chances of that. Um, now, the one thing we can work on is having, for example, like healthier fats, um, but it's a really play between um, between what the consumer wants. So if they want really kind of greasy bacon, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then obviously it won't be healthy, but if they want, you know, pure, pretty much muscle, um, then it, we can do something that's much healthier. Um, we can, you know, incorporate um, more vitamins. We can um, add, for example, omega threes rather than trans fats and play around. Crazy! That. So you can actually make it however you want. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. And what's it taste like? <laughs> um, I mean, it tastes the same. Exactly the same. Yeah, I mean, depends what you're doing. So obviously today we're around kind of sausages and um, burgers. So it's like more, oh, is that what people are? Yeah, so more processed meats. Yeah. Um. So it's easier to mimic the taste than uh, your okay. wacky beef. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So we will be able eventually to do that, but the industry is not there yet. Okay. So that like the texture and taste of a steak, you'd you'd be able to tell the difference. Um. Today, yes, because today we haven't, you haven't worked on how to like exactly, but yeah. in in theory, no. Okay, because like, because I guess normally as as an animal gets older, the muscles get worked and the the meat changes. So you can and... work the muscle. So the muscle you can work it in a lab. You can do electric stimulation. You can do mechanical stimulations. So you can work the muscle. That's not the problem. Yeah. Is if you look at your steak, there's lots of different you know cells cell types in it. There's your blood vessels. I mean, all the things you don't want to think about when you eat a steak. But there's a lot of kind yeah. of complexity and different types of cell that come into place. Yeah. Um, and that's the, the really the, the difficulty in, in create, re- mimicking that and the marbling. And Amazing. Eating, uh, but that's not too far away from... No, um, but a few years away. Okay. And do you think vegans or vegetarians or both would, it, would end up eating it? Well, it depends why you're vegan. Um, if you're vegan or vegetarian um, because of ethical concerns... Um, then most likely, yes, because you're not hurting any animals. Yeah. Um, but some people just don't like the taste, and some people haven't eaten, you know, meat for 40 years, so going back to meat feels just weird yeah, yeah, um, for yeah. them. But for us, our kind of primary target market is more meat eaters. Yeah, yeah, fine. And then halal, kosher? Well, with pork... Um, Pork's I mean, not kosher been, anyway. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> There's been one rabbi um, that has said that it is, but I mean, it's with pork, it will be a lot more disputed. I yeah, think. yeah. Um, very unlikely. Yeah. Um, but when you're talking about your more typical, so with chicken, with beef, then yes. Interesting. Well, so the rabbis have said, yeah. Yeah, quite a few. Um, actually, with halal, there's been more dispute. Okay. Um, but with, with that, you kind of want to look at it in a way so either um you can really take the cells once it's um once it's slaughtered but it's still kind of debatable but you kind of want to look at it as it's not meat um which great news which what do you mean so you kind of want to look at it that it's not so you're selling a in a way a different story where you're considering this as not being meat so being if you want um the same as like bread is or things like that which means for, yeah, in Jewish tradition, you can eat it with milk, which is great. Meat. Oh, what, do you think you'll be able to eat it with milk? Yeah. Interesting. Wait, so how? So why do they regard it as not meat? Because the animal hasn't been killed. Exactly. So the cells, yeah, um, yeah because the cells are not living anymore when you're really eating it and it's 
Yeah. Wow. Even though like there's cells from an animal. Yeah. Grown in the grown in the lab, mm. they regard it more as what they call it, yeah. parav or parabola. yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And then what about uh, for halal then? Um, I mean, it's similar, uh, similar to kosher. It's just there's been a bit more dispute around that. Yeah. Um, but people are still, yeah, working on. Interesting. Yeah. But if the animal was killed in a halal way, and then they, and then you take the cells. Yeah. Is that? Um, m- it should be. Yeah, maybe. It should be, but it's better usually to work with um, with live cells. With yeah, yeah, fine. How have you found um, running a startup? I mean, it's difficult, but no matter what you do, really, it's difficult, right? Um, yeah, yeah. All startups um, are difficult. So I think um, I found it not harder to do what I'm doing now than my old startup, which was a lot simpler in a way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the challenges we have are similar challenges than, you know, every um, every startup is um especially any other kind of biotech stuff. yeah yeah so you've always done startups right what drove you to just say i'm just gonna do something on my own i'm not gonna get a normal job i'm just gonna i think it's i'm more of a generalist person um in a way i like a lot getting to the stage where i know what i don't know um but without needing to be really a specialist in one single field um and that's one of the kind of drivers on top of the kind of impact drive um, of running this business is that there are so many fields to think about you when I think about the science and the science is divided, you know, by the cell science, the engineering, um, the materials, I mean, there's, and, and more, um, looking at the legal aspect, the consumer, the marketing, um, on top of like fundraising, hiring and all of that. So all these aspects together, um, yeah, were fascinating. So you wanted to you wanted to be kind of at the uh, kind of macro level, yeah, coordinating exactly. and not getting too deep into exactly. being in the lab all day and exactly fine. So it's your first hire then was a scientist, so yes. they could crack exactly. on with developing. So we have a stem cell scientist, senior stem cell scientist working with us. Okay, and we're now recruiting. If anyone is listening, is a biomaterial or bioprocess engineer, we're recruiting. Cool. So how many do you have at the moment? Um, so at the moment, there's three of us full time, and yeah. David Hay, that's part time. Okay. Um, and we're actively recruiting for two roles. And then these are science roles. Yeah. 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 And we have two volunteers as well on oh. the business side. Nice. And what do they do? Um, so one of them is helping us um, around the marketing. Okay. Um, yeah. So Rory Russell um, and Clarice, um, she's also helping a bit around the marketing, a bit around recruiting, also around the business and more. Brilliant. Generalist. So you got a really nice team around you. Yeah. And so from day one, you got people around you with different skill sets. Yeah, and to we help have you. amazing advisors as well that have yeah. helped us really from day one. So these kind of like mentors. Exactly. Ah, have you found them useful? Yes, very. Um, some are more technical, some are yeah. more in business, but they've helped us a lot. Great. So what they spend, what they sit down with you every quarter or something, and. Um. Usually every month, some Brilliant. some more, some less. Nice, and then. How's the funding and fundraising and coming along? Yeah, so we've raised 150,000. Great. Um, up to date, and I've put in money in myself, and we're now raising a larger seed round, um, which is coming along. We're getting some interesting traction. And, awesome. Yeah. So that's we'll the next. Close that soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So if anyone wants to invest, cool. Exactly. Um, so is that, is that the major next hurdle now? So you've got it going. You've got the science. Well, one of them. Um... One of them. <laughs> <laughs> fine so what, what are the other major um so yeah um recruiting and yeah now we want to do that prototype so getting through um to working and getting the porcine cells to work properly yeah to, fine to get that. and so is recruiting being a challenge to actually find people with the right background or attract them to a startup or what's been there yeah i mean so the challenge is there's so many really good people um but because we're such a small team we need very kind of specific skills and there's no one to really train people um so we have less flexibility of saying okay you'll learn this when you know as you go along um and we need a lot more like okay you have to already know what you're doing which makes it a bit more she's someone experienced exactly but at the same time with the startup mindset and motivation. And yeah, yeah. That. Happy to just get on unsupervised. Exactly. They could be working from anywhere, I guess. 
No, they need to be in the lab. <laughs> They've got to be down in in, uh, um, in, Br- Bristol, in Bristol. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. And what's the talent market like for scientists down in Bristol? Um, so luckily, as well, a lot of scientists don't mind moving. Um, okay. And Bristol University has some great, um, great talent as well. Um, so great. it hasn't been too much of a challenge from that perspective. Are you finding any any like Europeans or wanting yeah. to come? Yeah. Yeah, 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 we've had quite a few interviews with Great. people from all around Europe. Despite Brexit and... Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, I mean, people, I think, from as well around the world, we've had people interviewing from the US as well, um, from Asia, so that hasn't been too much of a challenge. Yeah, so yeah. Excellent. <laughs> when when will I be able to eat a piece of your meat? So commercially, um, we're looking at three to four years. Um, from, from now? From now, yeah. because we need to go through... Before we're able to do this commercially, we have to go through regulations. Um, so that it should take about a year and a half. Um, to, to get approved. Exactly. And then you can start selling. Exactly. And then you'll be selling to supermarkets. And... Um, so we'll start with restaurants. Right, okay. Um, and later move to supermarkets. Okay. How, how come? Um, so restaurants require as well like smaller production. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. It's easier to have control of kind of how it's cooked um, at the beginning. So making sure that, you know, people are comfortable and it brings that image as well. If you start with high-end restaurant, it brings that image of kind of, this is a high value product, Yeah, yeah. Um, which helps as well. And will the price be in the end the same? Um, or are you so, going to be slightly? <laughs> so we'll start with organic, um, organic kind of prices. Um, okay, and fine. hopefully in the future, we expect it to go lower than meat even. Fine. And so organic prices are, what like 10 20 percent or something more um then normal. Then normal um no nearly like double are they normally double wow nearly wow a bit less okay so you go high in restaurants yeah interesting well good luck lovely Thank to speak you. to you um and um i look forward to watching your journey and Thank getting you on the podcast again soon yes thank you very much thank you so much pleasure Hey folks, thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places.